In this video, I will teach you how to attach your left hand to your weapon using IK in Unreal Engine 5. This video follows on from my weapon system tutorial series, so if you're not up to date, I'll leave a link to the first video on the screen now and also in the description. So now let's get straight into creating this system. To start, we want to add a point on our weapon that we can attach our left hand to. So open the content browser, go to your weapons folder and open the base weapon blueprint. Go over to the viewport, then click add and add a scene. Name this left hand IK. Because all of our weapons will have different points where we need to attach the player's hand, we can leave this scene component where it is in the base blueprint as it will be inherited by the weapons that are children of this blueprint. Then in those weapons we can move it around to perfectly position the player's left hand. Now we can just compile and save this. Then we want to open the content browser and open up our animation blueprint. This is where we're going to set up our IK functionality. Next, we want to come over to this blend poses by ball. This determines what animation to play depending on whether the player is holding a weapon or not. Since we only want to use left hand IK if the player is holding a weapon, we want to have our IK functionality before this true pin. So disconnect it, then we want to select all of these nodes and move them across to make some space. Next, in that space, we want to right click and add a fabric node. What this node does is position a bone to a target location. This means we can position our left hand bone to match the location of the scene that we added in our base weapon blueprint. If you connect this up, you will see that this local to component node has appeared. This simply converts a component space pose to a local space pose. If we then drag off the fabric and connect it to the true pose pin, you will see that we get a component to local node, which effectively just does the reverse. There are two things that we need to plug into the fabric to get it to work. The first is the alpha. This is effectively how much the character follows the IK. So if the alpha value is set to zero, the character will just play their normal animations. If it is set to 1, the character will show their full IK and the left hand will be attached to the weapon. The effect to transform is the position and the rotation that our left hand should follow in order to stay attached to the weapon. These values will be calculated and set in the event graph, so we need to right click and promote them both to variables. Next, we need to make some changes to our fabric. So select it, then go over to the details panel. For the effector target, we want to set this to the right hand bone. Then for the effector transform space, we want to set this to bone space. Next, we can set the effector rotation source to no change. Set the tip bone to our left hand bone. Then we want the root bone to be our left shoulder bone. We can just leave the precision and max iterations as they are, and this is pretty much all we need to do for this. Next thing we need to do is calculate and set both the alpha and effect to transform variables. So to do this, go over to the event graph. We want to come over to this update animation event, then go all the way to the end where we should have this is valid node. This is basically checking if the player is holding a weapon. So if this is valid, after we set our aim speed, we want to set our alpha variable. So drag it in and click set. Set the value to 1. Then connect it up. Next, we want to calculate and set our effect to transform variable. So drag it in and set it. Then connect it up. To calculate the effect to transform, we're going to need to access the character's mesh so we can get the left hand bone and also the scene that we added to our base weapon blueprint. So start by dragging in our player character reference variable. Drag off it and search for get mesh. This is the skeletal mesh used for our character. Next, drag off the player character again and search for a get current weapon. Then drag off that and search for a get left hand IK. This is the scene component that we added to our base weapon blueprint that we want to attach our left hand to. Once we have both of these, we want to drag off the character mesh and search for a transform to bone space. This allows us to convert the scene component's transform into bone space so that we can align the left hand bone precisely with it. 
we need to plug in the position and rotation of the scene component. So come over here and drag off the left hand IK and search for a Get World Transform. Then right click on this pin and split it. Then we can just connect the location to the in position and the rotation to the in rotation. Here we need to input the exact name of our left hand bone. If you don't know it, you can click this button to open up the character's skeleton. Then, as you can see here, mine's just called left hand. So I'm going to come back to the animation blueprint and type this in exactly the same. Next, what we need to do is turn this into a transform. So right click and search for a make transform. We can just plug the out position into the location, then the out rotation into the rotation. And the scale we can just leave as it is. Then finally we can just connect this to the effect to transform variable. If we compile and save, then go to the viewport and press play. If you pick up a weapon, you will see that the left hand is shaking all over the place. One reason this is happening is because we've not yet set the position of our scene component in our children weapons. So I'm going to open the content browser, go over to the weapons folder and open up the base full auto weapon. If you open the viewport, then select the left hand IK scene component. You can move it around to where you want the player's left hand to be. To make things easier, I would suggest splitting your project into two windows, one with the viewport and the other with the weapon blueprint. Now, if we press play and pick up a weapon, we can then go and press F8, which will allow us to move the camera around freely to easily view where the player's left hand is in real time. So now if I go over to the weapon blueprint, I can start moving around the scene component and you will see that the character's hand is moving to match it in real time. Keep moving it around until you're happy with the location of the left hand. Then you can press escape, then click compile and save on the weapon blueprint. Now if we go back to one window and press play, you will see that the arm is still shaking when you first pick up a weapon, but after a few seconds it stops and the left hand is now perfectly attached to the weapon. The arm shaking occurs when the weapon is moved suddenly. So this is why it happens when we first pick up the weapon and it also happens when you aim in and out. So to fix the shaking issue when we first pick up the weapon, instead of just setting the alpha to one, we want to more smoothly transition from zero to one, meaning that the left arm will more smoothly transition from the character's base animation to the IK position. So to do this, we need to go to the content browser and open our character blueprint. Once in here, you want to find your spawn weapon event. Then you want to come across until you find where we're setting the is holding weapon variable. Then we want to disconnect it from here. We're going to move the set is holding weapon all the way to the end of this code, just to make sure that the weapon is attached to the player's right hand before we make any changes to the animations. Now to smoothly transition the alpha value between 0 and 1, we're going to use a timeline. So drag off here and search for a timeline. Name this something like TL underscore IK alpha. Then just double click on it to open it. Now click the add track button, then select add float track. Name this IK alpha. The length of the track is how long we want it to take for the player's left hand to attach to the weapon. I have found that 0.3 is a good value for this. Next, we want to hold shift and left click on the graph to add a point. We want the alpha value to start at 0, so set both the time and value to 0. Now we can hold shift and left click on the graph again to add another point. This will be for when the hand is fully attached to the weapon. So we want to set the time to the full length of 0.3 seconds, then the value to 1. Finally, I'm going to add one last point to the graph. This is because I want to keep the alpha value at 0 while the character is transitioning from the idle animation to the holding weapon animation. So you want to set the time to around 0.15 and the value to be 0. Now that we have done this, we want to go back to the event graph. Here we want to right click on this IK alpha pin and promote it to a variable. Then we can just connect it to the update pin. 
Now we can just compile and save this, then go back to the animation blueprint where we want to access this variable and set it to our alpha variable in here. So drag off the player character variable and search for a get ik alpha. Then just connect that to our set alpha. If we compile and save, then go back to the viewport and press play. If you pick up a weapon, you will see that the left arm is no longer shaking like it did before. You may notice that the hand sometimes still shakes when the gun moves suddenly. So to fix this, we're going to more smoothly update our effect to transform using interpolate. So I'll quickly show you how to do that now. Start by going back to the animation blueprint. Here we just want to disconnect these two location and rotation pins. Then I'm going to select these two nodes and move them across a bit to make some space. Next, we want to right click and search for a V interp 2. This will allow us to smoothly move the left hand rather than just snapping it to the location. So for now, just connect the out position to the target. Below this, right click and search for an R interp 2. This will do the same for the rotation. So connect the out rotation to the target. Next, we want to save the current location and rotation into variables. So start by right clicking on this pin and promoting it to a variable. Name this smoothed effector location. Then we just want to connect it up. Next, we're going to do the same for the rotation. So right click on this return value and promote it to a variable. Name this smoothed effector rotation. Then just connect this after. Now we can drag in our smoothed effector variables and connect them to the current pins. For the delta time pins, we can just drag off here and search for a get world delta seconds. Then make sure to connect it to both. Finally, for the interp speed, we want to set this to something quite high so that the left hand keeps up with the weapon. So I found that 60 was good for this. Next, we just want to connect our smooth effectors into this make transform. Then just connect this up here. Now, if we compile and save, then go back to the viewport and press play. If you pick up a weapon, you will see that the left hand no longer shakes. If you still have some shaking, I would recommend just messing around with the location of the left hand IK in your weapon blueprint, and moving it a bit further away from the player often helps. Finally, you're going to need to set the location of the left hand IK in all of your weapon blueprints. So while holding this semi-auto rifle, I'm going to press F8 to allow me to move the camera and see the hand more clearly. Then I'm going to go to the content browser and open the semi-auto weapon blueprint. Then, as I did before, I'm going to select the left hand IK, then move it around until I'm happy with the position of the left hand. Then you can just press escape, then compile and save your weapon. Then if you press play and go and pick it up, you will see that your left hand is now better positioned. Your player's left hand should now be attached to all your weapons using IK. In the next video, I'll be going over how to set up weapon-specific sound effects for things like shooting and reloading. If you would like to be notified when this video comes out, hit subscribe and click the notification bell. If you're finding this series useful, please consider leaving a like and commenting down below what you would like to see in future videos. Finally, a quick thank you to all of my Patreons and YouTube members, without whom I wouldn't be able to keep making these Unreal Engine tutorials. Thank you so much for watching.